So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, showing up. Um, our next talk in this day-long uh, seminar is going to be Notebooks One-on-One -on -one for SQL People. And the two amazing ladies we have here to deliver the talk are Julie Kosmarno, who's the Principal Program Manager with Microsoft, and um, she's a frequent speaker, book author, and um, conference attendee as well. And she was my first mentee a long, long time ago at the past summit. So I'm exceptionally proud of how far she's come. Um, along with Julie is Barbara Valdez, um, who is a software engineer with Microsoft and working with Julie on the same team. Take it away, ladies. All right, awesome. Thank you, Mala, for the lovely introduction. Uh, let me just share my screen here. All right. Hopefully you can all see my screen. All right, welcome everyone. Okay, so data platform or data in general has changed quite a bit in the last few years. You know, the first time I used SQL was back in, I don't know, 2003, back with, or 2004 maybe with SQL Server 2000. And since then we learned quite a lot of new things. And I'm going to show you today how notebooks can actually change the game a little bit so that you can learn a little bit faster. So I'm very thankful to have Barbara joining me today because she's a software engineer from the team. And not only she built the feature, but I also get to learn some of these things with her. So I uh, always love working with a uh, with team trying to build new things for you, SQL, or for all of us, SQL people. All right, I'm going to get started here. Okay, so this is our learning journey. So first of all, you're probably wondering, hey, what's Notebook? Because I heard this for data scientists. I want to know uh, more about it. So how do I get started? And then I'll talk about why Notebooks and then how you can get started. And also, if you're really uh, getting really good with producing Notebooks, you can organize your notebooks into Jupyter Book, which is one of the demos that, uh, that Barbara will share today. And I'll also share a couple of uh, takeaways and resources where you can also get started or get inspired from other communities. Yeah. All right, here we go. So this is what notebooks look like. And I will show you or demo you right away because I know you'll probably prefer to see it in action. Oops. Need to log in first. Ta-da. Okay, so we have Azure Data Studio running. So I'll talk a little bit more about Azure Data Studio, but I'm just gonna show you the notebook first here. So to get started with notebook, I can just simply go to new and new notebook. If I click on that, you'll see something like this. And the default in Azure Data Studio, the kernel is SQL. So there you go. So you can now start typing all the SQL code away and all that kind of stuff. But before I get there, there are two things that you wanna um, you want to make sure that you understand first, especially if you're super new to Notebook. In Notebook, there are two types of cells, code cell and text cell. So I'm going to start getting started with the text cell aspect of it. So currently I'm in a VC week mode. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here. There are actually three types of modes, VC week, split view and markdown mode completely. Uh, but I'm going to uh, walk that through slowly so that, uh, so that you can see what's going on here with the text cell. Okay, so let's first say, uh, hi, uh, women in tech. And then you can make this a heading. And then you could also, whoop, what happened there? Oh, <laughs> I think I probably just uh, pressed uh, the wrong thing earlier. There you go. Um, I accidentally pressed delete my bed typing in the morning. <laughs> so you can say hello like this and then you can format it so that it becomes bold or italics and that's it. So immediately with the VC week, you can start producing a uh, essentially a text cell. And if you're already working with something like GitHub or Markdown before, you probably can use that, uh, that skill. So Usually, so for example, because I've been using Markdown for quite some time, I usually prefer to use the split view here. So I can say, um, let's see. Um, so maybe I'd create a new heading. My name is Julie, something like this. And then that's a second heading. And I can also create a list. So list item one, item two, 
And then I can uh, say if I don't remember the syntax for Markdown, I could also just uh, use the WYSIWYG button on the top or the, the, the toolbar button on the top. So hello, something like that. So that's it. So that's just a tag cell. Now, what makes it really interesting is if you already have something like a database, so I've got um, this SQL Server 2019 instance, I happen to have a have it connected to a database. So Azure Data Studio allows you to connect to uh, SQL Server on-prem, Azure SQL VM, also Azure SQL DB or Managed Instance. You could also have a KQL. So for example, Azure Data Explorer, you can connect to that. But for now, let's just play around with the SQL kernel. So from here with SQL 2019, this one happens to be connected to a database already, but you could also connect to a server. Um, so from, from the connections fillet, but when you run a query, uh, yeah, you can connect to an, a, a SQL server, server um, which by default, it will connect to a master database. All right, so if I have a uh, database like this, I can simply go, all right, maybe I'm interested in sales or invoices. So let me just start typing some uh, select statement here. Maybe this is bad practice. You shouldn't be using top 10, uh, you shouldn't be using star. <laughs> so I won't use top, uh, I won't use star. So I'll use, uh, let's just do invoice ID here. Invoice ID from sales.invoices. So it's really cool that it also has these um, uh, intelligence as well, so that you can uh, easily find or type your queries a bit more e effectively. So now I can create a text cell. Maybe I want to move it up. So if I want, if I do want to move it up, I just use this uh, specifically this button here to move up. But yeah, the the cell each cell usually has some controls that help you to navigate around the cells. So from here I can say uh, this is my first script. And then I could also add a new cell. So for example, maybe code cell here. Maybe let's do another one. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, maybe this time I will use order ID and then something like this. Uh, let's do, maybe let's just do count. Make it a bit more make sense. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Okay, so I've got 70,510 rows. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so when I save this file and then say I share this notebook file and then share it with someone like Barbara as an example, if I save everything as is, it will not only show on Barbara's side the text cell, so essentially you know this text cell here on the top, but it will also show the, show the code as well as the result set. And, and that's pretty cool. So that makes it easier for, say for example, hey, Barbara, I wanna help, um, you know, I want you to co help code review this. Can you please check it out? Um, she can see the text, she can see the code, she can also see the result set, which is super awesome. Now, there are times perhaps when your query might contain a result set uh, or may return a result set that is a little bit sensitive. And then if you run it in notebooks, so for example, say this invoice ID is a bit too sensitive, then you probably go, mm, I don't wanna share the results. How do I clean it up? So there is this button on the top that allows us to uh, erase all the uh, result set. So if I do that, that's it. It's uh, the result set's gone. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool actually. Um, very useful there. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the top part of this because it gets uh, kind of gets really interesting. So first I'll let me talk about the kernel side of it. So in a notebook, there is this concept of, or there's this thing called kernel. Uh, the way I interpret kernel is like as if it's a language. So if I want to start writing a SQL script, then I go choose SQL script, which is by default here. But say if I want to, um, let me go back to my notebook here. Say if I want to choose, uh, or if I want, if I want to start writing Python, then I'll just go change the Python kernel. And then I can start typing a Python script immediately. So maybe something like um, code cell. So print hello world or something like that. And then that's it. It will print hello world, which is pretty cool. 
And I know most of you probably are coming from a uh, SQL world. You probably use PowerShell quite a lot these days. So there are a couple of options. The one that I really love using these days is the .NET PowerShell, but you could also use the PowerShell. The .NET PowerShell here is actually the .NET interactive version, which requires you to do a little bit of installation and configuration, um, but it, it can be very powerful. Um, if you want to know more about the .NET interactive aspect of uh, of this, you may also want to check out Rob Stuhl's uh, blog or videos. He's done a really good job in explaining the .NET Interactive and how he uses it. But yeah, for now, I'll just use uh, the, the the PowerShell one, which should be in this instance um, uh, should be pretty straightforward. So, for example, I could do get child Adam, and then if I run that, it will just give me the list of the directory. So if I use the .NET PowerShell, it's going to be the same thing. Oh, still waiting. Doo -doo -doo. OK, so it's running now. So it's the same thing, yeah? So in one notebook, generally speaking, the way I write notebook these days, I usually use one language at a time. But if you decide that you want to kind of do a bit of a mix and match a little bit, uh, you can, but you just have to make sure that before you run the cell, you change the kernel to the appropriate one. So that's that's something I had to, to look out for. All right. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, so this is all well and good. Um, what else is out there in Azure Data Studio that makes it really great? So this is one of the ones that I really love um, in terms of being able to write notebooks because I can, especially in Azure Data Studio, I can also publish uh, notebooks in other uh, in other locations as well. So for example, GitHub, you could also publish in Azure DevOps too, by the way, um, and then install the Jupyter Preview extension and we'll show. So here's an example of the exploratory analysis that I did. This happens to be using Python, um, but if you, you know, publish the, uh, a SQL notebook, it should kind of show as well on, on GitHub really easily. So it's really nice. So this is a good way of sort of like saying uh, or sharing to uh, people in the community or teammates. Um, you could always have, you know, private repo, obviously. Uh, share with the teammates and then say, hey, um, I've got this really cool analysis. Uh, do you do you want to reuse it? And you can reuse that. Um, you can simply download it from from the repo. So here's an example. For example, the exploratory analysis. Yeah, uh, I could click on the download button here, which is actually shows the raw version. And this is what it looks like when when you write a notebook. Underneath, it's actually just JSON format. Really hard to parse humanly, right? So what you want to do is to use a client tool or, or Jupyter Notebook Viewer, um, like, like Azure Data Studio, to be able to view this JSON file. If you happen to have a, um, a Jupyter installation yourself, like a, 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 most data scientists probably have something like this, uh, the same notebook can mostly render the same. It just really depends on which version or client viewer you have, really. Okay, so this is Azure Data Studio. Um, so earlier, what I did was copy the URL, the raw.github user content, and then, whoops, I can go back to this uh, notebook, um, or Azure Data Studio, sorry. And then I can paste the, uh, the IP1B file or the IP1B path from the GitHub and click open. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna download that, um, start in your, uh, cache temporarily, and then um, and then show this in your Azure Data Studio. So now you can start essentially using it. So if you already have Python kernel or Python installed and everything else, uh, you can also run this and maybe start modifying as an example and save it locally, etc. So there's also another way of getting say a copy of the no notebooks from other people as well. So for example, this is my GitHub repo here. You can go to the code here, uh, the button, the green button here code, and then just copy the path. Yeah, hopefully that copies it, just in case I'm gonna highlight. And then from here you can go, okay, um, let me try to uh, to clone that, uh, clone that repo and then just paste it here. 
then what it's going to do, it's going to ask me, hey, where do you want to, um, where do you want to clone it? So I'll say uh, clone it on my demo uh, Z drive location. And that's it. It's going to start cloning. You should be able to see a set of notebooks shortly, depending on internet connection. And then I'll say, yep, yeah, I want to open it. I don't want to save the old files. That's fine. OK. All right, well, that loads. Um, is there any question, Mala? Um, no, no, there's no question. You can ask. OK, no worries. All good. By the way, folks, if you have any questions, just um, post it on the chat or on the Q&A, and then we'll, we'll take a look. OK, so the clone, so the Git repo is already, uh, it's already cloned to my uh, location here. Yeah? So I've got a bunch of notebooks here that I can now show you, uh, maybe the ones that is a bit more SQL-like. So for example, this one here happens to be uh, an example of reproducible research or reproducible analysis. But I, this one's actually using a SQL connection, so or SQL language. So yeah, so now I can start. Uh, analyzing this data as well as the code. Um, and then if I scroll all the way to the bottom, it, because it's an analysis, reproducible, reproducible research or reproducible analysis, I can see, oh, this is the conclusion. So from this analysis, which is related to marketing products, so let me just scroll all the way up. It's to do with the marketing experimentation with lovely abstract and introduction, et cetera. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, so especially if I'm a business user, you know, I can just scroll to the bottom and then have a look at, oh, what's going on here? So that's pretty cool. Um, but if I want to share this with someone who's more of a data analyst or a database developer, as, as an example, um, they can have a look at the code as well, understand what's going on, and then review the code and look at the results. So that's pretty cool. So all I've got to do here if I want to run this is just change the connection and then connect to uh, a database that, 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 that works. And then in this example, I give an example of connecting to my container um, location. Yeah, so that's a quick tour of Azure Data Studio with a little bit of, uh, with, with quite a lot of notebooks actually. <laughs> and let's see, okay. Now, this is an interesting uh, question. Why notebooks? You're probably wondering, yeah, that looks kind of pretty decent. So, but why is it exactly? So this is a little bit of a journey how I got started with notebooks a couple of years back. So, uh, my role at the time was I had to do quite a bit of data analysis and uh, actually analytics. So, but usually the first question that comes from the business user is something like, hey, I wanna know the product that has the fastest turnaround. And then I would go, okay, yeah, let me create that. So I start running SQL scripts. So this is pre-notebook era, yeah? So that, that was me just using uh, whatever I have uh, just to write a SQL script. So I investigated this and then I would, uh, I would, produce the results or save the results into Excel. And then I send it back to the business user. And they come back to me and say, hey, I need product category listed in the result, in the result set, but I'm not seeing it. So I go, okay, sure, I can up update the query. That's fine. So I go do write another script and then I save it into Excel spreadsheet and then I send it back. And then they asked again, hey, is that for the last quarter? And I go, oh, I didn't put anything related to the sales data. So, okay, let me just rewrite this query again, expand it and share the Excel spreadsheet or save it in the Excel spreadsheet, the results, um, and then share it to, uh, to the business user again. And they say, okay, you're a rock star, thank you. And I go, yay. But it turned out, this is the script that I get in my closet. <laughs> I have a lot of scripts, uh, like mini scripts that I've written, and I put some comments here and there, but I wasn't really sure which one I shared to, with the business user, which script associated to the result set, or which script associated to the Excel spreadsheet that I shared with the business user. So that's a bit of a problem, because many days later, when they come back to me and then ask, you know, that list that you sent me, can you refresh it? And I would go, Oh, I don't know, what list, which one? And I'd say, oh, that list, yeah, yeah, okay, I know which one. So here you go again. 
And then they ask more questions like, are you sure this is the right kind of same kind of logic as last time? And I would go, oh, shoot, what did I do last time? <laughs> and then, so there's a lot of panic happening. So to me, that was essentially playing Jenga with SQL scripts. I would, I, sometimes I, you know, back in the day, I, I just wouldn't really know too well which script I was using for analysis, especially when you do it in a rush, yeah. So what's the real problem here? When scripts and output are separated, it's really hard to reproduce just based on the output. So you have that reproducibility problem when you just kind of use the output like Excel spreadsheet. And the code may look good, but is it returning the right results? So if I share it to Mala, hey Mala, can you review this code? Um, and she'll probably go, well, yeah, the joints look good. It's pretty, you know, well optimized maybe. Uh, and but she might not know if it's actually answering the business question, right? And then the next one here, this is a little bit more on the troubleshooting aspect of it. So if you have scripts that actually specifically do troubleshooting and then uh, and then you saved it and then two weeks later, someone else come back to you or maybe you have to come back to it and then go, what did I do last time that made it work? And if you save the script, but you didn't know what the result was and what happened at the time, as in like a snapshot of what happened, then that's gonna be a problem as well. And then if you, share this script with uh, you know, other people, like I mentioned before, if they don't have any context of what's going on, they're probably just reviewing the syntax rather than the whole thing. And lastly, if you're doing troubleshooting and your troubleshooting scripts actually is written in something like OneNote maybe, or maybe a wiki, there's gonna be a lot of copying and pasting of code snippets from your uh, OneNote or Wiki to something like say SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS or Azure Data Studio or PowerShell, uh, IDE, whatever that you're using, right? So it makes it like your Wiki or your OneNote or whatever that might be, it's not, uh, it's not executable. You have to do a lot of copying and pasting which introduces quite a bit of human error, so. That's a bit of a challenge there. Okay, so what I really love about Notebook is the fact that it combines documentation, it is executable, it, it allows you to write code, it allows you to save results if you want to, and it allows you to do visualization as well, and it allows you to do uh, or provide analysis and interpretation, and that's the beauty of Notebook. And remember our school science project back in the day? This is what makes Notebook good because back when, you know, we're in primary school, maybe high school, when we learn all this, a little bit more scientific method, it turns out that a lot of analysis, uh, whether it's data analysis for business case or it's, it's, it's analysis for troubleshooting, it is good to have this rigor, this science rigor, where you have a question, you have hypothesis, you have a prescribed steps where you can uh, reproduce later, or you can step back and step through it actually. And on, not only that, you can capture the conclusion and you can share it with somebody else so that they can expand on it. So notebook kind of help you to kind of think a little bit more about how can you collaborate with other people better and how you can save yourself later as well. As an example, like if I have to look into it again later, uh, do I have enough kind of structure and documentation here to revisit it and run it again? So it just kind of adds that, which is super cool. So uh, I showed earlier Azure Data Studio with notebooks, but I want to kind of step back a little bit because uh, I think this is quite good to know. Whenever you, you hear Jupyter Notebook, sometimes it means the open source format itself. So it's just the standard way. So that way other viewers, so for example, GitHub or uh, Azure DevOps or VS Code or Azure Data Studio can view, uh, can view the Jupyter Notebook properly. And some, uh, some, some of the tools out there or some of the um, uh, what's available out there, sometimes they, they are just Jupyter Notebook viewers. So you can view, but you won't be able to run. But there are client tools out there that allows you to run, uh, for example, Azure Data Studio, as well as uh, VS Code. Okay, so just a quick recap on Azure Data Studio aspect, which is one of the reasons why 
I really love using notebooks in Azure Data Studio is that it is open source. It works not just on Windows. So if some of you are on Mac OS or Linux, you can use Azure Data Studio there. Uh, it supports Git. So I showed you a little bit on how to clone uh, a repo with notebooks. You can do the same thing for any other SQL scripts if you want. Git is just Git, so you can just clone. And then it has reached that oriented kernel. So if you are coming from SQL, Azure Data Studio is actually really good because it supports the SQL kernel. And it has extensibility framework, meaning other people can build extensions and then you can, uh, you can load it into Azure Data Studio to customize your environment. In fact, if I have time today, I'm going to show you how to load a SQL diagnostic extension uh, built by uh, someone in the community, Emmanuel Mezzo, hopefully I said his name right. Um, and you can load that in Azure Data Studio and there you have a number of kind of diagnostic uh, notebooks that you can use immediately. So you might be thinking, hey, that's a tall order to know quite a lot of things related to notebooks and get started, but it's actually pretty easy to get started. So let me show you quickly how long it actually takes to install Data Studio um, in your environment. So ak.ms get Azure Data Studio. This is where to download the, uh, the file to install. And this is on a new VM. And yeah, so it's gonna take a few seconds here. So I'm just gonna use the default um, settings here just so that we can get started pretty quick. It should load up soon. Yeah, so default installation, all good, next, next. So some of the challenges with Jupyter Notebook sometimes, and especially when I first started, by the way, was, man, now I know I have to know about Python and how to install Jupyter Notebook and all these things. It's just a little bit too complicated to get started. But I'm going to show you like here, how easy it is to get started because all of the kind of tooling is just simply packaged in Azure Data Studio. So I'm going to just uh, enable preview feature here. Um, yep. And then, and then let me show you how I'm creating a new notebook quickly. Uh, yeah, so this is just the welcome page. And then let's see the new notebook. And that's it. So I've got a notebook, except if I want to write a Python as notebook as an example, I have to set up Python. So Azure Data Studio helps me to set this up, which is nice. Um, it downloads all the packages of Python. I don't have to know anything about pip or anything like that. So I can just get started. And then I think it's almost done. Dependencies installations, all good. Let's click on the code here and then write some Python script. And that's it. So that's how easy it is to install Azure Data Studio to get your notebook set up. But you have other benefits too, for example, setting up you know, SQL connections and everything. All right, okay, so a quick one here I want to show you before I hand it over to Barbara to show the Jupyter Notebooks aspect, uh, sorry, Jupyter Book uh, aspect. Okay, so let's see, it looks like I haven't um, pinned my notebook. So now I can go confer to. So this is the beauty as well on uh, with Azure Data Studio where I can use the search functionality and then I can start searching for scripts like this. And then from notebooks like this, as an example, if I want to start pinning a, uh, a notebook so that I can get back to it you know, later, I can simply, whoop, that was me bad mousing. <laughs> so I can simply like click pin and then my new notebook here gets pinned. So that's really nice. Okay, so before I show you the bulk conversion, let me open a file. Yes, okay. So in my demo file, I should have a SQL script. So if you're still playing around, not quite convinced about notebook yet, but you have a, beautiful SQL script already written, say something like this. And you go, I want to know what it looks like if I turn it into a notebook. There is this button called export as notebook, right? And then if I click on that, it's going to generate a notebook. That's pretty cool. 
So now, so this was a snippet that I took from Glenn Berry's uh, diagnostic information query script or yeah, information query script. And then I converted it into notebook just with the one single button. Now, I know quite a lot of you are very good with PowerShell today and you're probably going, hey, I really you know, want to confront all my PowerShell scripts as well as SQL scripts, how do I do that? There is a, a module called PowerShell Notebook. It's very powerful. Uh, it's built, uh, it's created by uh, Doug Fink, uh, PowerShell MVP, if I remember correctly. And yeah, so he wrote this, so I've got this installed and uh, let me just change my directory to raw files. And then let me just show you that I do have files SQL files and PS1 files here, right? So just to be sure, I'll run this. Okay, I got the SQL file, PS1 files. Uh, I don't have any IP1B, but just to be sure, I'll remove any IP1B, which is the notebook file extension. Let me just run this. There's no IP1B, so that's great. So you can convert one by one using PowerShell script like this. So if I look here, there should be IP1B file, there you go. So that's newly created at 9.16 a.m. my time. <laughs> so, uh, which is 9.16 a.m. right now in my time. And then I can also convert PowerShell notebook. So there should be another one here. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, cool. So let me just remove all the IP1B files and then run this. So what's going to happen is it's just going to convert it all in bulk. So it's pretty straightforward. If you know PowerShell already, simply recurse all the PS1, then just call the convert to PowerShell notebook. Or in the SQL instance, it's convert to SQL notebook. Very easy to get started. All right, with that, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Barbara soon because if you look at my current <laughs> notebook area here. It's all just one long list of notebook files and it's really hard to uh, share or, or organize. So Barbara here is gonna take over and show you what it means to organize a set of notebooks to Jupyter Book. Take so it there's away, Barbara. one question, Julie, for you. Yeah. Um, I heard that ADS downloads and installs automatically now as part of SSMS install. Is that true and the same version you're installing now? Uh, it is true. Um, it is, yeah, the latest, uh, in the last kind of couple of releases of SSMS, Azure Data Studio is there uh, as part of the installation. So that's great. Um, I have to get back. I'm, I'm not quite sure actually if it's using the February release. So what I'm doing, what I'm using right now is the uh, February release and uh, Azure Data Studio is released monthly. So it just depends on when the SSMS release is, then I think Azure Data Studio gets caught up then. If you happen to use an older version of Azure Data Studio, fear not, because when you launch Azure Data Studio again, the next time it will ask you, hey, there's a new update. Do you want to restart to update? So it will download the pieces automatically for you. So you don't have to uh, download it manually. Thank Great you. Great question. All right, um, Barbara, take it away. Thank you, Yuli. Yeah, I really love the versatility and the simplicity that Jupyter Notebooks bring to the everyday life of uh, software developers and data scientists. So let me just um, start sharing my screen real quick, just to uh, just take uh, a step further and with these notebooks and um, so it's, uh, and I start organizing them so they're easier to understand and uh, easier to share. So uh, let's see my notebooks view. So I have these two notebooks that if I'm new to the team, I don't know what, what are they about? I mean, it says CSD 106, I click on it and then it says app troubleshooter. I don't know much about it, but let me show you something. So I have this, uh, this, item in the in the notebooks view, which is a book. And if I expanded it, I can see the same notebook that I open what I right here. So for me, it makes more sense now because I know that uh, these notebooks, it's part of a troubleshooter section. And also uh, they belong to the operation and support uh, SQL Server Guide. So, uh, 
we want when you want that your that your notebooks tell a story and they're easy and you want to organize them so they are easy to understand for everybody and it makes it uh, more uh, feasible to share them. So this is where uh, your pirate books really shine. Uh, so I'm just going to show you one file, which is uh, the most important file that you need for your pirate books. And this is the table of contents. So see how I was talking about the troubleshooter section. I can uh, collapse it and then expand it again. And in here in the TLC, it's basically um, the backbone of our book. So you can see here that um, the troubleshooter section is defined here. So it's called troubleshooters. And then this URL is basically the pad of the notebook that it's going to open when you click on it. And then this sections is an important keyword because it's where you're going to you're, you're basically saying okay so this is uh this notebook is a section and you can add um multiple notebooks here um and it, it will show right below in here like a tree structure so i want you to know that uh we don't include um the extensions of these files and also uh, we don't include absolute paths in here. So even though uh, this TLC file is really long, uh, it is very, uh, it's very simple and clean and it's easy to understand. But um, when you have a bunch of notebooks, say like 60 notebooks, it can be uh, very time consuming to create one. And also, uh, just to modify one, I mean, just to add a, uh, another section or when you start adding subsections within this uh, section, then it starts getting uh, more, more difficult because you have to take into account, um, you have to know JAML in order to uh, modify this DLC. So there is a learning curve for learning JAML. That's why um, in Azure Data Studio, we have an experience that creates um, uh, your book. So, let me show it to you. So in the notebooks field, I'm going to click here and then click on create book. And then uh, there's basically two options when creating books. You can create an empty book or you can create a book from a folder that contains a lot of notebooks. So I'm just going to, I'm going to show you first the first one. I'm going to show you both. And then uh, I'm going to show you the uh, how you can create a book based on a folder that contains a lot of notebooks. And for that, I'm going to use um, the SQL Server Guide notebooks. So it's a real scenario. So let me just type here, empty book. And then for saving location, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on with demo. And then uh, it's asking me for the content folder. Since it's going to be an empty book, I'm just gonna leave it um, blank. Then I'm going to click on create. And as you can see, uh, an empty book was added to my, to my not notebooks view. Now, let me show you how you can create a book based on uh, multiple notebooks. Then create, create a book again. Then I'm going to click here, see you one, Barbara, then the save your location. So I'm going to choose the content folder. Oh, sorry. No, um, I'm going to choose uh, with demo. Sorry. And for the content folder, I'm going to choose um, uh, the folder that contains all uh, all my notebooks and see how uh, we I have directories here. Well, each directory contains an, uh, multiple notebooks. And uh, what is really great about uh, this feature is that it honors the folder structure. So uh, when I create this book, I shall see a section called common with a multiple notebooks there and then another section that called diagnose and data data, right? So, uh, so I'm just gonna select this folder and then click on create. Ta-da! So a, a, a new book was, was created based, based on the folder that I passed in. And as you can see, uh, I have a, a section called common with multiple notebooks here. Um, I can navigate these notebooks and it's really easy for me to uh, read and understand uh, these notebooks. So now that I already show you this, I'm gonna go ahead 
and go back to my empty book because this is another feature that I want to I want to show. It's very cool. So remember those notebooks that were lying around in my notebooks view? Well, I'm gonna I'm just going to collapse everything because I have a, a lot of stuff in my notebooks view, and I'm gonna click on her and then click on move to. And what what this does is that it basically loads identifies all the books that are open in my notebooks view and it lets me choose one so i'm going to choose empty book and i'm going to add it here see how uh my notebook was um has disappeared from my notebooks view so i can open now my empty book and it's there so now i can just move notebooks and move sections because i actually can move sections as well uh as long as it's an item in in the notebooks view i can move it and I don't have to worry about um, modifying the TOC. So just let me show you um, how uh, the TOC of this empty book looks now. See, so I have a readme file that it's empty and then the notebook that I just moved. Awesome, okay. <laughs> so now that I show you that, uh, you know how to create books, you know how to edit them, you basically know how to, you don't have to know about the TOC anymore. Um, I also wanted to show how you can share, uh, share books. And we have a very cool feature that lets you download uh, books that were published as a GitHub release. So if you go right here and click on Add Free Multi-Parted Book, it will open a dialog. And then you can uh, choose the repository that contains uh, the book that you want to download. And before uh, <laughs> uh, keep doing that, I just want to show you uh, a quick shout out to the uh, Tiger Toolbox repo. So for the uh, for the ones that do not know, the Tiger Toolbox repo contains a lot of scripts that are super useful and troubleshooting notebooks for um, SQL and Azure. So if you don't know it, just check it out. It's super awesome. And then, well, going back to the releases. <laughs> um, so um, this is um, Tire Toolbox contains a release that contains some book, my book. So I'm going to click on search here. And then it'll, be, it'll load all the releases that are under that uh, repository. So I'm going to choose uh, the SQL Server Operational Guide. And then uh, what is this? Uh, what this is uh, this is very awesome because it let us um, basically keep track of different versions of the same book. So, for instance, I'm going to choose the CU, and then see how all the different versions that I have and I can download. It's awesome. So, I'm just gonna click the version eight and then select the language, and I'm going to add it. So, since I have um, uh, I have the I work workspace uh, configure uh, when I open ADS. So it's going to be downloaded in my with demo um, in my with demo folder. Uh, if you don't have a workspace configure, it's going to be downloaded into your users folder. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can open here, you can navigate it. Um, yeah, just just let me show you something else just um, before I finish. Um, so just so you know how to uh, create these releases. So basically just create like a simple release and then as an asset, you're going to upload uh, your book as a compressed file, as a compressed folder. And then this annotation is very important because this is what allows us to uh, basically fill um, our dialogue and basically allow uh, um, to choose uh, the book and the version and the, and the language. So um, the notation is uh, name, version, and then language, and everything separated by dashes. So make sure to respect that. And yeah, so that'll be it. I mean, I just show you how to create books, how to edit them, and then how to download books from GitHub releases. And um, if you have anything to add, Julie, you, um, um, uh, anything yeah, extra? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I love it when somebody, oh, I love it when, uh, whenever I present with, uh, with software engineers in the team, because sometimes they just show new bits that I don't even know. Like for example, that group one, that's probably a new one that uh, Barbara just showed earlier. Um, 
Uh, so Barbara is using the insiders build of Azure Data Studio. And that's one of the things what, um, what I really love about working with, with us internally, as well as with the community is that we can ship new bits where we are trying new things out. So uh, the, the group, um, the creating the new group, that was, a, that was pretty new, right? I, I think that was the first time today, this morning that I said, so that's awesome. Um, so by the way, just kind of to call out a couple of things here. Um, what Barbara is showing you today is SQL Server Troubleshooter, um, and it is published on the Tiger Toolbox. So check out um, Tiger Toolbox on GitHub repo because it has a lot of useful troubleshooting notebooks. So, um, and uh, Barbara also mentioned earlier that, hey, you can create releases in GitHub. It's actually an easy process. You only need to set up a repo and then you can start creating a new release on the GitHub page itself. So it's, it's managed by GitHub, uh, not Azure Data Studio. And then once you have a Jupyter book, you zip it. Um, I think you, I think Barbara showed you the .zip file as well as this. I think the Linux one or the TG, what, TGC. What was the extension? TGZ, yeah. <laughs> the TGZ one, um, the, the TGZ version. And yeah, just make sure that you, you name the the, the file, the .zip file or the compressed file properly because it feeds the dialogue in Azure Data Studio. So uh, where when you add the at Jupyter, um, at Jupyter remote book, yeah. So very cool demo, Barbara. So thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to show besides the SQL one? <laughs> No, actually, I'm um, just going to stop sharing and just hand it over to you. Oh, and if there are any questions on the chat, Nala, just let us know, please. Okay, sounds good. All right, let me share my screen now. Okay. There aren't any questions. I don't know if that's because of lunch hour or <laughs> something else. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a second breakfast hour uh, in our time zone here. <laughs> for right me. Okay, let me share this. Um, all right. Okay. So there is another, so, okay. So you saw earlier with the Tiger Toolbox. So you're probably thinking, Hey, that's very Microsoft oriented. It's published by the Microsoft folks, even though it's on GitHub, uh, which you can also help add and, you know, contribute and all that kind of stuff. But here's an example where I actually, um, I'm looking at the SQL Server Diagnostic Book built by Emmanuel. And what I've done is I've downloaded the physics file. So this is the physics file. So physics file is just an extension file. So what I'm gonna do now is, so I've downloaded it here, yeah. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is on the extensions marketplace, I will install from physics and I would say, install this here and click install and say third party extension. Yes, um, I trust this extension. So it's gonna install away. So what's gonna happen is when you do control shift P, which launches the command palette, I can now start typing, if I'm correctly, it's called launch book SQL Server diagnostic book. So if I click on that, now it will load. So let me just minimize the top part. So it will load SQL Server diagnostic book. So remember some of the um, scripts or the notebooks perhaps that, that other people have created as an example. Uh, now you can start loading the notebooks here really easily. Uh, this one happens to be a long notebook so it may take a little bit of time to load. Um, yeah, so there it is. So that's one that was created by Glenberry. And then you could also look at SQL assessment API as an example. So there are quite a few notebooks out there that you know you can get started and be useful right away for your day-to-day -day job, you know, in, in the SQL world. Okay. So Julie Parson has a question. Yes, go Do ahead. Do you have a go-to website for learning more on notebooks? Oh, yes. Um, we, for that, let me share with you uh, the path um, and it's gonna be on the slide deck after this. So I'll get back to you on that one. Thanks, Mala. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a quick way of using um, uh, or installing or yeah, installing existing notebooks out there. Uh, if you want to use the SQL Server 2019 guide, there's also a different way of loading it um, from, from Azure Data Studio besides, or in addition to the way that uh, Barbara showed you, uh, which is using Control-Shift-P again, then 
uh, type in Jupyter Books uh, SQL Server 2019 guide, and then you can get the localized version, etc. So that's just another way. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, actually, besides us, let me show you one more thing. And this is a pretty cool thing uh, that came a little bit out of the blue, actually. <laughs> uh, I met with Kenny. Uh, he is a program manager from the Dynamics 365 team. So it looks like he also, or his team, Dynamics 365 uh, BC, Business Central, have also uh, provided troubleshooting guide that you can add to Jupyter, or th that you can add to, um, to Azure Data Studio. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. So you just follow the step that Barbara showed earlier and way to go, you can, uh, you can load the Jupyter book then and start troubleshooting. So that's very nice. Now, uh, let's see. So this is the other community based uh, notebooks that I was gonna show or uh, use case that I wanted to show. Okay, where's my PowerPoint? There we go. Okay, so essentially, Jupyter books are really, really useful to organize your notebooks. Um, thank you, thank you, Barbara, for showing that uh, the steps to do it. Um, so very great. And then, um, I guess for the notebook development and sharing, this is a bit of a recap. Once you're happy with, you know, trying to give it a go, write notebooks in Azure Data Studio because it's pretty easy. It has the WC Week kind of. Um, uh, uh, way of writing the, the text cell, uh, the code cells part, you're already good with SQL, so just type your queries away. Um, if you're coming from the incident response sort of world, you may wanna start thinking about troubleshooting guide template, and you can bundle your notebooks as Jupyter books. You, you, you wanna use source control because this becomes a living code or living guides, maybe troubleshooting guides for other people, especially if you're sharing with other people. Um, so use GitHub, Azure DevOps, uh, ship it uh, in a way that uh, Barbara showed you earlier uh, using the release in GitHub. So that's one way of, of sharing with uh, external people or with people in the community. Um, you don't have to do that if you are just sharing internally, that's fine too, but you can always make GitHub private repo, right? And then this is one of the things that I also like about using notebooks, especially in the SQL scenario. Now, we, from Azure Data Grip in, in Microsoft, we do ship a lot of new things. <laughs> Sometimes even for me, it, it would be kind of tricky to catch up with what's going on, especially when trying to deploy new resources and things like that. So I'm gonna show you quickly today how I have used Azure Data Studio to deploy a new Azure SQL database from Azure Data Studio directly um, that I can save the deployment script essentially, a deployment notebook actually, so that I can use it later. Now this is uh, especially useful if you wanna build up and tear down your environment really quickly, uh, especially for demo purposes. So here we go. Um, by the way, uh, from here, when you go to new deployment, you should be able to choose other uh, deployments or containers. But in this one, I just use Azure SQL database, yeah. So uh, sometimes I use the container um, uh, deployment uh, from this uh, from this dialog, which is super useful too. So if I click next, um, this is a place for, uh, for us or for me to choose uh, the resource type. So I can choose single database, elastic pool, et cetera. So for now, just use single database. So essentially just single, uh, deploying a single database to an existing Azure um, SQL DB um, server. So I provided all the details. So this is what you'll end up with, a notebook that, uh, that has the configurations that you have set before from the previous UI screens. Um, yeah, so and then now you can just simply run all, which start executing all the setup and everything else. So it will take a few moments. And uh, once it's done, you should be able to connect to the SQL DB. So that's kind of one of the ways of essentially using Azure Data Studio to create a notebook so that you can deploy uh, an Azure SQL resource. Okay, so to recap a little bit. What Barbara and I have showed you today are a few th a few things. And a lot of these few things are actually related to one specific theme. It should be pretty easy for you to get started and learn something new. So it starts with, it's easy to install, so you don't have to know much about Python or Jupyter Notebook. 
installation as such. So you only know how to, you only need to know how to download Azure Data Studio and get started. And then, uh, and then it allows you to do easy editing. So if you want to write beautiful uh, text cells or beautiful description to your notebooks to, or to your scripts, uh, it has the Wysiwyg support. And then if you work with multiple languages, especially with SQL or KQL even, uh, that's really useful for if you are working with Azure monitoring sort of capability. Uh, and then PowerShell, so it's there. So that's pretty cool. And .NET Interactive is also there too. It's easy to access other Jupyter notebooks. So Barbara showed you how to connect to troubleshooting guides uh, from the Tiger Toolbox repo. And then I showed you also how to install an extension that somebody else built that I could, so that I could use the SQL Server Diagnostic Notebook. And then I showed you how to export SQL scripts using uh, the UI as well as using PowerShell so you can do it in bulk. And I showed you how to learn new things. So for example, learning how to deploy an Azure SQL DB. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? So notebook uh, use cases is actually quite a lot. Okay. Uh, so yep. Julie, there's a question. Yeah, sure. How does run all work if there are multiple kernels and code? Ah, <laughs> that's the exception that we uh, we don't have that we uh, that we uh, don't support today. So if you click run all but have multiple kernels, that's the uh, that's the um, drawback that we don't we don't have today. So, but uh, keep the feedback coming, and I'll show you how to provide feedback as well. Um, that's something that we have heard. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, if you have a specific use case, uh, go to the GitHub repo that I'll show you shortly where you can add details on your use case. Um, okay, all right, so I'll continue with the, with the notebook use cases. So notebook for SQL people is not just for you to write SQL script, but it's also for you to uh, interact with, with what you do on daily basis. So as an example, if you uh, have a deployment notebook uh, sorry, if you have a troubleshooting notebook, then you can use that to kind of, you know, interact with the with the script so that you can, you know, mitigate and and at the same time uh, capture what you have done. And so essentially, it's part of documentation, and it's good for collaboration. So I we showed you examples earlier, and it's also good for deployment, which I've also we've also shown you earlier. So that's uh, that's really uh, uh, amazing kind of variety of things you can do with the notebook itself. All right. So if you want to learn more, so this is the question that you had before: how you can learn more about uh, notebooks and everything. So if you go to ak.ms Azure Data Studio, that leads to the Microsoft Docs page, which you can traverse and then go to the notebook se se section. <laughs> and then if you go ak.ms forward slash get Azure Data Studio, you can uh, download Azure Data Studio and then get uh, get it up and running. And because Azure Data Studio is released on a monthly basis, I would also recommend you to go to ak.ms Azure Data Studio blog because we uh, usually talk about um, what new features are being shipped this month. So uh, you know, uh, keep an eye out on the upcoming uh, March release. It may have some of the uh, bits that uh, Barbara demoed earlier in the insiders or from the insiders. And these are the list of uh, notebooks that people uh, have created either internally and externally. So yeah, so with this or with that, I'm going to pause a little bit and see if there are any other questions, Mala? Um, no questions. Okay. All right, so hopefully you- Thank you ladies, thank you. Yeah. So hopefully you got a screenshot of uh, the links now. Um, so I just want to sum it up. So notebooks for SQL people use cases are quite a lot. So it's all the way from data analysis, exploration, perhaps troubleshooting guides, which we showed you a little bit, uh, some examples of troubleshooting guides notebooks. It's good for tutorials or how-tos. It's good for data engineering, data science sort of work. Um, we've shown you the deployment uh, UI, feature discovery as well. And then um, the language and kernels that we support are quite a lot. So um, yeah, so try it out and give it a go really. Um, 
And if you have any feedback, uh, feel free to let us know. So it's been it's been great to be able to talk about notebooks with Barbara here today, uh, again from uh, software engineering the team, and I and uh, really love to uh, hear more from you on your use cases on notebooks and perhaps more demos on conferences or user group uh, meetings. Thank you, Julie and Barbara. Thank you, Mala, for moderating and thanks everyone for attending. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank Bye. you everyone. Bye. Bye. See you.